All right, guys, so today we're doing what's all wrong with the new BMW M5. You notice we got the E46 off the lift finally. We got this thing on the lift, and all we've done so far is just pretty much pull all the covers off from underneath of it. Um, we went through and pulled the drains for the ECU the other day and just kind of inspecting everything, what's going on. So I guess we'll start with everything we see up here looks factory. I ordered the whole kit for the oil, the oil filter and new OEM man air filters. I put the Canon ones in my last car. Did it help? Who knows, right? Who knows? Uh, but everything we got for this car is top notch. We ordered uh, ACL rod bearings with extra clearance. We ordered the, actually the BE bearing bolts, which are made by ARP. They're like three, almost 370. So it went up a lot in price. I went back and watched my last video. I think there were like 200 back then. Um, the ARP branded ones are like five something. I don't know why they made it for somebody else and are cheaper, but everybody uses those now anyway. Um, new oil pan gasket. Uh, we got a new control arm set. I want to touch on something. One of you guys are bitching at me in the comments for using the aftermarket control arms. Uh, Factory control arms are like a thousand or twelve hundred bucks for one of these. It's the same as any E60, uh, unless it's all-wheel drive E60, then they're different. We've never had a problem with out-of-market control arm sets. I don't use the tie rods on these. I don't use the sway bar links. Only the thrust arms and the lower arm is all we really need for this. And uh, my other one had it on it, it drove perfect. These are all ripped out, as we're going to show you here in a minute. Uh, other than that, I would say paint-wise, there's a little bit of crackage here which is gonna have to go to the body shop and get a few things done. It's white, so you can barely freaking see it, right? Um, like I showed you in the last video, there's a couple of little hell dings here and there on top. Might need a little PDR, if it doesn't show up on camera. That camera it might. Um, all the windows work, all the locks work. We don't have a lot of check engine light stuff at all. Um, it is running rough. So the approach we are gonna take with this is I'm not going to try to fix it or do anything with it until we do the rod bearings, period. And uh, I think we're going to do, probably at the end of this video, we're going to pull the oil filter off and we're going to take a look at it and see if there's any metal in it. That'll tell us the story beforehand. There's a couple of things that might trip us up on this car. One, if the rod bearings are really gone and they've scratched the crank, I don't think that's the case. Two, if we need a vandals pump, I don't know, I don't think that's the case, but we'll know soon enough. Uh, it does have a little bit of a growly noise too when it's running, but it's running so rough, it's hard to tell. That also could be out of the puller, anything, anything. Um, the other thing is the clutch. The clutch is not that expensive in this, not hard to do for us because we have the brand new tranny jack, super easy. Um, these don't really have too much of a guibo problem. I did buy upper rear control arms for this because every 60 since the beginning of time has those that are bad. And it seems like a crime not to replace those. They're pretty inexpensive. Inside the car, everything looks good. I don't know if that camera's gonna show you inside here, it might. Um, everything's good shape, there's no issue. Everything's slightly dirty, well within normal reason. Um, I think I showed you this car before. This does have the aluminum trim. This is not a wood grain car and so what we'll do on the inside of this, we'll go ahead and pull, uh, we'll pull the seats out eventually, clean everything. We got our new steamer, we got all that stuff. The headliner, Alcantara headliner is all good. Uh, there's no weird lights, actually has way less check engine lights than one of these usually have. It needs the headlights cleaned and stuff put on them. The side markers, really the factory side markers in it. Um, we don't really see anything too messed up. We're probably gonna go and pull the plenums off just to make sure nobody's taking them off and put it back on or rolled over a boot, or done nothing weird. There is no codes for any um, uh, throttle actuators, no codes for anything like that. Uh, it seems like a pretty straightforward situation. The ECU has not gotten wet, which is a huge plus. And this is the 06. So 06 is pre-LCI, um, but not like 04, 05, a regular 60 where it has the diamond key. It doesn't have any of that. Uh, all lights seem to work on it. Everything seems to be in working order. Um, 
like I see somebody's had the bumper off or something. There was a plug hanging down right here, probably from the fan. I don't remember what that's for. Maybe, oh, it's for the sensors, for the bumper, the sensors in the bumper. We'll investigate into that. This car, the tires are new. They are dry and hard and they're Michelins. You guys know I feel about Michelins. So let's lift it up. I'll show you a little more about it. Okay, so you can see control arms are totally roached out as they always are at this mileage. Um, a little bit of oil seepage, nothing's actually leaking. Uh, so that's good. looks like maybe a little seepage. Uh, I can tell you right now it's coming out of the O-ring on that. Uh, I did not order those, so we might have to order a set of those. Um, look in here. Like nothing's actually dripping in the pan or on the ground. Uh, that's typical S85. S85 is actually a pretty good setup. All factory exhaust, factory converters, um, all that kind of stuff. No issue at all with any of that. Just like, just like we like them, unmolested, we'll call it. Uh, I don't see any damage. The brake lines was another thing. They all look pretty much. Everything here looks perfect. You can see, I'm just looking around here. And looking back here at these rear uppers, the rear uppers are totally roached out. Let me grab a pry bar and I'll show you. As I suspected, there's a little ball joint right there. I if I could get in there. I'm at the wrong angle to do it. You can see how it's all wet around there and the boots are all gone off of them. And that's very typical of this, normal wear. The bushings in the rear diff look perfect, as most of them do with this mileage. No issues one bit whatsoever on those. CV axles, I've never seen the S85 CV axle go bad. This one's no different. The sway bars are not rusty at all. Uh, usually they're rust and flaking. The rear links, so like that's all good. I've seen the front brake pads are about a little less than half. We'll probably go and replace those. Um, so pretty much on these, if you see my last videos when I have my maroon car, the rundown of the rod bearing situation is we'll pull the electric fan out the top. That allows us to get the belt off to check all the pulleys, all the Eiler pulleys. Um, looks like nobody's replaced any of that stuff, which I'm mean, gonna guess for this mile, just kind of typical right there's the noise we're hearing. And you can look up in here and you see that pulley's like rubbing on something. Something's happened there, something pretty severe. And uh, that will need to be replaced. So I'll have to go and order that this evening. I'll have to go back and remember how I found the last ones. Um, essentially what we're gonna do is put our cross brace on top to hold the engine up. All this subframe will come down. Uh, we'll remove all the control arms. I'll we'll probably just leave the wheels hang there from the strut. And uh, we'll take our transmission jack and lower this down, discard it. That opens up to the whole oil pan. And at that point in time, there's like 50 or 60 <laughs> uh, 10 mil bolts. We'll zip all those out and then we're down to it. We'll take the vanos pump off, check all the lash on that, do all that. I wanna show you one more thing. A lot of guys are telling me every video, you don't have to replace the whole set of control arms. You only gotta replace, look at that. You only gotta replace the thrust arms. And this thrust arm is totally gone. But if you look back here, I don't know if you can see it or not. I can barely see it. That bushing is garbage. I can see it just in the very top. It's got a rip in it. These lower ones and the ball joints go out about the same time as the thrust arm bushings do. You never want to do just the thrust arms. You always want to do the whole setup. Overall, I think me and Philip are both really excited about doing this car. Uh, like I said, will it need more stuff? Is that why it's running rough? No. It smells like the fuel in it is so freaking old, it could barely even run off of it. But I do not want to try to keep starting it. I don't want to do anything until I do the rod bearings in it, period. Because I want to look at that vandals pump. I want to make sure we're not damaging anything. The worst case scenario on this is, uh, I did buy a brand new micrometer too to measure the crank. If the crank has any scratches, any wear, anything at all, the engine has to come out of this and we have to either have the crank turned or replace the whole crankshaft. We know there's nothing, there's nothing hammering. There's no bearing spun at this point, hopefully. Uh, so what we're going to do when we do this is 
We're gonna take each cap off, look at it, put it back on, go all down the line. Because if I have to open up my brand new bearings as you're putting them in, you get to one that's totally spun, you just wasted your brand new bearings like 200 bucks. So we're gonna be a little cautious with that. Let's stop this for right now. Let me get the oil filter pulled off. Let's make sure there's no metal on it. And if that's clean, things are looking up. All right, let's go ahead and pull this off real quick. 24 mil. There is a center release uh, drain. Those are always stripped out on these. We're gonna fill up get the camera back a little bit because uh, <laughs> things may not end well. It's up pretty high, so we're real lucky. I'll knock it off and this freaking go over my shirt. Everybody always asks, why do you always wear black clothes? Philip, I wear black clothes. Because if you wear white, you're only going to own it one day. <laughs> That's what I'm going to do before I even. That seemed a little bit risky even for me. It's a little nasty. All right, so let's pull this filter out. Now the nice thing about this, nobody's messed with it. Is there stuff stuck in the filter? Not really. Not really at all. That's really, really good. If we had a bunch of, especially aluminum and lead in here, little bits, there would be a big issue. Let's throw that up there. They have a, the Molly or a brand filter that's in it. I want to dump a little more of this out. I want to try to show you this in a light. We'll go by the door maybe and do that. And this is kind of typical for these cars, right? I don't know. Maybe this way. There you go. A little bit of copper in it in the bottom of the filter. But for um, an engine that consumes rod bearings, that's normal. There's nothing other, different on the floor, nothing other than copper in it, which is what the good thing is. I want to flip this upside down up here and let that drain out. Um, so now that was the first step. 4D rod bearings, anything, that's the first step. I feel really good now after hearing the growling noise and seeing our pulley that that is what the noise is. However, I don't know, all these guys that are driving these cars 160,000 miles, 150,000 miles, and they say, I never done the rod bearings, I never had any problem. You won't have a problem that you're gonna know about. You literally just be driving along and it just blows up and that's it. They have no warning, no nothing. It's good, no good within just a second. It's not that hard to do that on these cars. This car's way easier to do it on most. Um, there is 10 bearings. Obviously it's a couple more than usual, but it's not that bad. Uh, so all together in parts, um, let me see here. So we had 200 for the bearings, 380, let's say 400 for the bolts. That's going all out. Uh, the L-ring oil pan gasket was, I don't know, uh, 38 bucks, something like that for the OEM gasket. The uh, Vanos line, I actually found a deal on one, is 129. Worst case is 180. And so you're four, five, six, seven, eight, you're $900 in this with the oil change. Maybe it sounds like a lot. The other, opportunity, the other option here is eight to 10 grand for an engine that you're gonna have to draw bearings in before you put it in. It doesn't make sense. It's always better to do it before you have an issue instead of waiting. That's gonna be it guys. Really this car is very nice shape. A little bit of cosmetic stuff, but very little bit. Uh, far better shape than my maroon was when I first got it. That car took a lot of money to fix because all the ECU issues had a bunch of other stuff people's messed with over the years. And white is a rare color. So this will be for sale at one point in time, hopefully within the next month, as long as everything goes right in here. Um, when you hook this to it, check the clutch depth. If anything's questionable with the clutch, it's coming out and a new one's going in. And other than that, when we're done with this car, It'll be nice and reliable.